All right, uh, the mosquitoes are out and I'm ready to talk about sharpening. I've been MIA for a few weeks. I've been sick for most of the last four weeks, such as life. I'm back now, hopefully I'll be back for a while. We'll see what happens next. Anyway, today we're gonna to talk about sharpness and specifically what sharpness is. Now that may seem self-evident, but I bet that if I asked like 90% of you to describe what it is, that you couldn't articulate it the way that I'm gonna articulate it right now. And that's okay from a functional standpoint, like there's tons of people out there who can sharpen things just fine and probably basically understand this, but have never bothered to articulate it in, in words, but that can be important. A lot of the, our thinking happens in language, not all of it, not all of it, and I'm not saying that, that that kind of thinking is the most important kind of thinking, but it is important and it is useful, especially if you wanna communicate it to other people. So it's really useful to be able to describe something and really explain exactly how it works. And even once I, I was preparing for a class basically on sharpening like a couple of years ago it was at this uh, reskilling fair. And in preparing my notes, I just thought of the idea. I was like, well, what do I ask the students? I'm like, what is sharpness? And when I thought of that, I was like, why didn't I ask myself that question sooner? And when I really kind of thought the process out and put it into words that I could explain to like a beginner or person that didn't understand sharpening at all, it just helped put it into perspective for me and how really I felt like it kind of helped me understand the whole problem better, even though I've like written a bunch of stuff on sharpening and spent lots and lots of time thinking about it and sharpening tools. Now at that class, I asked the students like what is sharpness and this girl who's now a good friend of mine answered it's two sides coming together and I thought what an interesting and intelligent way to think about it two sides and you bring them together and they form an edge this is the most fundamental concept about sharpness and sharpening that we need to understand to start our you know that that's the starting place if you don't have that then you don't have a sharp thing now Technically, they don't have to come all the way together. Like, let's say, just just to be thorough here, let's say I have a tool, and one way to look at a tool for sharpness to kind of see if it's dull is to hold it like this and look right at the edge, but preferably with light coming from behind you. Like, if the sun was behind me, I'd stand like this and look at the edge. And if the edge is reflecting light, that means it has dull flat spots. So I could have a tool that's so dull that it has um, you know, a flat spot all the way along the entire edge and it's reflecting light back, and I could still take that and cut a piece of wood. So it's not to say that if the sides don't come all the way together perfectly, there is no sharpness, because really we need to define sharpness as the tool's ability to cut. So let's say I have a knife and a piece of wood. This is a piece of oak here. And I'm gonna say, well, you know, how sharp is this knife? Which is, you know, it's kind of so-so. I'm gonna cut with them and say, well, like how easy does it cut, right? What kind of cut does it leave? Does it cut deep? Does it cut shallow? Does it cut ragged? Does it just kind of chatter along or does it cut smooth like butter? What's the quality and the quantity? And that's really what sharpness is. It's an ability to cut. That's what it's all about. They're tools, they're made. You, you guys need to, check ins. Get. <laughs> Noisy, annoying chickens. They just... <sighs> that one's blind. It didn't see that coming. Yeah. Okay, where were we? It's all about cutting, right? It's a tool. It's a sharp tool. Sharp tools are made for cutting. How does it cut? Quantitative, qualitative. What does it feel like when it's cutting, etc. That's what sharpness really is. Next, we're gonna look at what makes a tool sharp or not. And that's the really important part of this discussion. Now, there's two major factors at work here that I, as I understand it, and, and my understanding of this is mostly experiential and a lot of contemplation, a little bit of book learning. So, you know, I'm open to new information if anyone has anything to add to the conversation. But there's two major factors that I see that contribute to something being sharp, and they are the following. One is bevel angle. So the angle formed by the, the, the two sides coming together is all important. So let's say we have these two. These are different. Say so this is a knife and this is a cold chisel. Like a cold chisel is made to cut hard materials or a stone chisel. So with a cold chisel that's you know well tempered and ground to a good angle for cutting hard materials, I could take and cut a piece of iron 
um, and just pound on that thing, it'll cut right through it. So if I took this and cut into a piece of iron, it's gonna get screwed, but if I took this and cut into a piece of wood, it wouldn't do much. I mean, it would kind of like cut very hesitant. It would be no fun. And the finer we make this angle, let's say we have a straight razor or something like that that's super thin, then that's gonna be even sharper. If I take this and get it as sharp as I can and take that and get it as sharp as I can, this is gonna be easier to shave my face with than that is. Not that I ever shave my face, but it would. Now this is the case, even if we took these and applied the next factor, which is degree, the fineness of the grind, or how much it's polished, like how much these, these bevels are polished. So if we polished them all exactly the same, you know, for the same amount of time on the same grits, this is fundamentally a sharper tool than that is. This is a piece of obsidian, uh, which is basically volcanic glass. And if I take this and I bust off a piece of it, this is sharper than a piece of steel can be gotten, or at least I mean, this is kind of crude because I'm just knocking it off with a, you know, a rock. But there's ways to tweak that process to make it even sharper, like if you use pressure instead of percussion. But no matter, the obsidian, like especially like a really clean glass, the obsidian, this one's a little cloudy, or a piece of glass can be gotten sharper than you can get a piece of steel. So it doesn't matter if you take your, your perfect, amazing Japanese whatever, sword, chisel thing, a scalpel, whatever, you apply the methods used to get steel sharp, which are basically abrasion, you can't get as sharp as you can get this. Because this material is totally homogenous. It doesn't have a crystalline structure, and it, you can think of it almost as liquid. And so when you put energy into it, the energy travels and it cleaves pieces off. And um, I've read before, I don't know, I can't say 100% that this is true, that they can split down to one molecule of thickness. Now, if we're sharpening a steel tool, we're using abrasion. That's an entirely different process. So let's say I take uh, this stone, which is 250 grit on this side and 1,000 grit on this side. And I take the 250, listen to this. You hear that gritty grinding sound? Well, that's going to leave scratches. It's going to leave scratches so big that I could actually see them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the 250 and I'm going to grind it until those two sides come together. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to go on the 1000 side and I'm going to use the 1000 side until all the scratches from this are gone and there's only the 1000 grit size scratches left. So what that looks like under a microscope, let's say we start with the 250. This is our bevel. You know, this is the knife and this is the bevel here, and we have these big old scratches like this. Well, ultimately that's going to leave us, you know, these scratches go all the way to the edge, right? We have the two sides coming together and they terminate at the edge. So we end up with this like sawtooth kind of effect. Now let's say we take the next grit and the 1000, and now we have like finer, more closely spaced scratches then we're just gonna look like a finer saw. And it doesn't matter how much we abrade. If we go to the next grid and the next grid after that, we go to 8,000 grit, let's say. It's still an abrasion process. Ultimately, we're gonna end up with scratches that go out all the way to the edge of the tool. Now that's why a surgeon wants a tool that's super, super sharp, because it's gonna make a clean cut. It's gonna cut easily, and it's gonna make a really clean cut that heals fast. And that's why they use obsidian for certain types of surgery, like eye surgery, where they want super, super clean cuts. Again, not sure, if, absolutely sure this is true, but I've heard that, you know, this is so sharp and so fine that it will actually cut through individual cell walls instead of just kind of like rankling and tearing apart. If you want something super sharp, you just need to go to finer and finer grits, but ultimately you're still polishing it with a grit. So ultimately this can't be as sharp as a piece of obsidian, but that's okay. It doesn't matter because it can be sharp enough and we're talking about function here, right? These are tools that we just want them to be functional. Sharpening is not an end in itself, it's a means to an end. But it's very helpful to understand this so, you know, things can go wrong with this process. Uh, the first thing that can go wrong is if we use the coarse grit and we have, you know, flat spots on our edge, but we don't bring those two sides together, well, then we have a problem because we still left, you know, flat spots along the edge. 
once we bring the two sides together to form an edge, let's say we flip over and go to this 1000 finer grit off the 250, we start with the 250, we go to the 1000, but we don't grind long enough and we leave some of these scratches. And this is very, very common. And so every once in a while we got this thing going on, you know, even though most of the scratches are fine. If you want the thing, you know, theoretically as sharp as you can get it, then you want to take all the scratches out from the previous grit. Like you're going to understand now that, you know, these steps are, are there for a reason and you need to, to perform them correctly. Like let's say if you rock the knife back and forth, like while you're sharpening, instead of keeping it perfectly flat. Like some tools will actually have an edge. Some tools will have a rounded bevel like this. So it's, con you know, it's convex this way. Well, you can't draw a line from here through the edge and say that this tool is this sharp because it's not. It's only as sharp as it is on, on the edge here where it curves out. So actually this tool is this sharp. So most tools have flat bevels and you want to maintain those as flat while you're grinding. So keep that angle really, really flat and don't be like rocking it back and forth like this to make this kind of bevel because it's only as sharp as the, of the very edge. Or if you go through the process of sharpening, you know, you go through the motions. The motions don't matter if you don't do it right. So if you don't sharpen the two sides on the first grit, this first coarse grit and grind it till those two edges meet, you can go polish it all you want, but you're still gonna have like all these dull spots that you left in the first place. Okay, so that's it. And um, there'll be some more sharpening videos coming in the future. Uh, some hands-on stuff, some stuff about tools to use for sharpening, things like theory. But this is most of the theory that you need right here. Like this is the most important stuff you need to know about sharpening. And sharpening is just the most fundamental of skills, right? You can have all the tools you want, but if you can't sharpen them, they're not that useful. But this is the most fundamental of skills. Like you need to know how to sharpen tools if you want to be a self-reliant, independent person. Okay, I'll see you next time. Oh! Dude, what's up?